to NR200P or not to NR200P? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous thermals, or to take arms against a sea of hot exhaust, and by opposing, vent them. Hey, and welcome to Machines and More. There is something very Shakespearean about this case, and I think it's really the enormous number of configurations that we as builders are spoiled with that it makes for such a good debate. I put this build together with the best knock to a fans to get an optimized comparison related to the use of a tempered glass panel and a vertical GPU. Now I'm also doing a review on a similar case and these noise optimized thermal benchmarks will also allow us to make a fair comparison for that review. But today, primarily, we are gonna be talking about this glass panel and no, the thermals aren't that outrageous. As many of you know, the glass panel is a different model number, the NR200P, and that version still comes with a vented panel. So you get one of these riser cables, a PCIe 3.0 riser cable for a vertical GPU. And you also get a 120 millimeter sickle flow fan instead of the 92 millimeter one. So there is quite a lot of value there for an extra $20. And personally, I think the 120 millimeter fan is a lot more useful than the 92 millimeter in this case. If you want the tempered glass panel to be able to see into your build, then I think this is a very good deal. A riser cable will easily run you at least that much. There's a few constraints though, and limitations abound with the tempered glass panel. First off, if you want to use a tempered glass panel with an air cooler, your best bet will be a tower cooler since those utilize the front to back or back to front airflow and um, the case is open on this end, right? The tempered glass panel isn't. So if you are using a top-down cooler, that cooler is not able to get uh, the airflow easily, so it won't be as good. Um, the clearance on the tempered glass panel for coolers is less than the vented panel, so technically this U12A is a marginal fit. As you might have seen in the NR200P air cooling thermals discussion, this panel does need some screws from the inside of the case to help it out. Although it's not the end of the world to have to use them. If you want to use an AIO with the tempered glass panel, it's a little bit of a cat and mouse game. So you have to mount it on the bottom. If you mount it on the bottom, your GPU is not gonna fit. So you have to vertically mount it. If you vertically mount it, you're limited to two physical slots, but not two slots of thickness necessarily. Thicker cards occupying two physical PCIe slots may still fit, but the closer they get to the glass in terms of thickness, the worse they will perform. A vertical GPU with a low profile air cooler like a Big Shuriken 3 is also a very bad idea, even though it will fit, since that will be choked off. And immediately in the vicinity of that cooler is what would be your biggest source of heat. So your best option with a vertical GPU is a 240 AIO at the bottom. And the Be Quiet Pure Loop 240 is your best bet if you can work around this decoupled pump. The decoupled pump does limit GPU length to about 310 millimeters because of the space occupied by the pump at the front of the case that, that pushes against the vertical GPU. Cards that are that long though are also gonna be thicker in general, so that'll have issues with the clearance against the glass as well. So those are just, that's not a good configuration. So let's talk vertical GPU thermals and fan direction. For this setup, uh, for the round of comparisons, I locked the NF812 by 25 top exhaust to 1100 RPM and the rad fans, same fans, to 1200 RPM. And the GPU fans were locked at 50%. I used the Ryzen 7 3700X and threw in an RTX 3070 Founders Edition card since I feel this set of components represents more of a medium high ground of GPU CPU thermals and will give more balanced information for those considering this case. So that whether that's a uh, Ryzen 3600 and a 5500 XT or something hot like a 10900K and a 3090. There is very little noise penalty from these particular fans and the system topped out at about two and a half decibels higher than the noise floor. This test was pretty simple, but very significant in the results. I just ran Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1440p uh, for 15 minutes and logged thermals for the entire gaming session. I did also reduce settings a little bit to hit closer to 75, 80 FPS, just to give the CPU more of a workout 
at about 50% utilization. The GPU, as you might expect, was pretty much at full throttle the entire time. Initially, I thought the GPU would see a lot more benefit from a top to bottom airflow, but as you can see from the graph here, running airflow from bottom to top makes a lot more sense overall. The CPU is pretty hampered even at low utilization just because the GPU's exhaust is being pushed directly into the radiator. I just don't know that it makes too much sense to run it that way unless you have a super cool GPU. The hotter your GPU gets, as you might imagine, the worse it'll be for your CPU thermals. Though at these 50% utilizations, it won't matter too much for gaming. There is somewhat of a noise implication since some folks would rather run rad fans a little bit higher just to keep that CPU cooler. Now, obviously for higher FPS gameplay, where your CPU is gonna see a much bigger role, this is an important consideration. Now, on this riser cable, there is something fairly important to note, and that's with all the boards I tested with this, namely X570 ITX boards. None of them auto-assign the PCIe slot to PCIe 3.0 properly, meaning you'll just get a black screen on boot up. The included riser is a PCIe 3.0, and if your board supports 4.0, you're best off putting the card, the GPU, into the slot directly first, setting it to 3.0 in BIOS manually, and then install the GPU with the riser cable. There isn't a huge detriment to performance by going from 4.0 to 3.0, at least not with any of the GPUs on the market now. So with AIO benchmarks out of the way, you might be wondering, what about for air cooling? With a tower cooler, you can run the GPU in the horizontal position, and with many cards, you can either run slim fans or 25 millimeter fans on the bottom to help the GPU along. For the same test, it's a pretty significant difference for the GPU. The Noctua U12A was set up as a rear intake because I don't recommend exhausting out the back with the Founders Edition Ampere Series card uh, putting its exhaust directly into the intake path. Heatsink fans were locked to the same speed as they were on the radiator fans just to keep the noise levels more or less consistent, though the extra two fans at the bottom for this setup did result in a 0.5 decibel increment over the previous setup. It's not a huge deal. The difference in GPU thermals is tremendous, about an eight degree swing between the two configurations. Now, personally speaking, with that in mind, I wouldn't run a vertical GPU. If you have a GPU that exhausts out the sides, like the reference 6800 or 6800 XT cards, then you'll probably see a little less of a difference, but still the fact remains that having airflow directed at the GPU's fans or even an open vented panel would be much better. And that's what you get when you put the GPU in the horizontal position at the bottom. Lastly, let's throw the vented panel in just to see how much of a penalty we are actually incurring from the use of the tempered glass panel. For the GPU, you get another one and a half degrees or so of uh, cooler temperatures, but it's not a huge difference, right? But take a look at one more thing, the clock frequencies. As some of you might know, the GPU's vBIOS will boost more up to a certain point, provided it has thermal headroom. So just looking at thermals alone doesn't tell the full story. Now, looking at frequency graphs is a bit challenging because of all the small fluctuations, but if we focus on a trend line, with the vented panel, you're consistently 20 megahertz better while still staying cooler. Either of these configurations are better than the vertical GPU clocks by about 30 to 40 megahertz. So with a tempered glass panel, the vertical GPU setup incurs about a 2% penalty, and how that translates into gaming FPS really depends on the title that you're playing. With that said, I think for many people, the glass panel is a pretty reasonable trade-off for the aesthetics. I would lean towards not recommending a vertical GPU though, certainly if you wanna do it, it's not the end of the world. Just realize there is another trade-off there. And you do have to go with a bottom-mounted AIO. I think Cooler Master made a pretty good decision by just giving users both options. If you've got the glass panel and you wanna use the vented panel, it's pretty easy to switch back and forth. I didn't wanna to put too much data on the grass, but I did also test the vented panel with the vertical GPU, and the gap was similar to the gap um, between the vented and the uh, tempered glass panel in the horizontal configuration, so about one degree or so. So one possibility would be go for the NR200P, you could run the tempered glass for your non-intensive activities, then when you settle in for some extended rendering or long gaming sessions, just slap that vented panel on for a good measure. Certainly though, judging by the poll results, it looks like most of our viewers are going with the vented panel. And that configuration, along with something like the Noctua C14S or the U12A would be my personal pick as well. 
I hope you've enjoyed the comparison today and you found this helpful. I've left some links down below for some of the build components if you're interested. And I would also really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to the channel. Happy building, and I'll see you in the next video.